Hello everyone and welcome back to my F1 2020 F2 season for the round in the UK at Silverstone. Uh, so as you can see at the top of the screen we are 13 points ahead of both Robert Schwartzman and Nobuharu Matsushita. So let's hope that uh, we can uh, extend that gap uh, today. But uh, yeah, first lap, or actually that was the second lap in qualifying, uh, we do manage to go fastest, but uh, we're going to go for a uh, third flyer here and uh, see if we can improve on that time uh, even more. There are a few mistakes on uh, those first uh, two laps, so yeah, we're going to see if we can improve. I think we can. Uh, with the fuel load coming out of the car as well, we should be able to find uh, some decent time on uh, this third flying lap. Getting through the first sector uh, pretty well, and we are green on uh, our time. Actually, it's a purple sector. Uh, through sector one so it uh, is the best of the session so far and uh, this lap uh, should only get better because uh, we did make a few mistakes in uh, the latter half of uh, our uh, second uh, flying lap so we're uh, continuing on uh, through this one uh, heading towards cops corner now uh, flat out or near enough uh, in formula one cars but uh, a significant significant corner uh, in formula two can make overtakes there uh, in fact but uh, as we uh, head through Maggots and Beckett's very tricky section, but uh, we actually managed to get through there pretty well. Bit of a cut uh, through Beckett's and heading through Chapel now uh, with uh, the DRS open uh, along the uh, hangar straight. Uh, long wait here uh, to get to the next corner, but uh, this lap's come together pretty well so far. Two purple sectors and uh, we are still uh, improving as uh, we head uh, through the final sector. We've dropped down uh, into P2 now with Nikita Mazepin. Uh, putting in the best time of the session. Great lap by him because uh, he has not had a great season so far. He's like second last in the championship, I think, at the moment. But uh, anyway, we come across the line and we will go fastest here. And uh, that is uh, a great lap there. I'm very happy with that one. But uh, I tried to go for another lap, but uh, we ran out of fuel uh, <laughs> right at the start. But uh, yeah, that uh, was it for uh, our qualifying session. We're just... Uh, I don't know what we're doing here. We're just driving along the road out of fuel. Matsushita couldn't decide whether to go ahead of us or uh, to stay behind. So eventually he goes ahead and pulls into pits. So uh, we'll move on to the end of qualifying and see uh, if we hold on uh, to pole position. The qualifying is complete and we're all set for an exciting race tomorrow. Your top three are Sonoda, Lunga and Nikita Mas. It's time to leave for now, but we'll be back tomorrow when the feature race gets itself underway. And uh, we do hold on to, to pole position. So uh, that is it. We actually get pole by quite a margin, seven tenths of a second. So I'll be turning the difficulty up uh, to, for the race. But uh, yeah, um, not really sure uh, what else to cover here with Matsushita down a long way, unfortunately. So one of our championship rivals, in fact, Schwartzman, is uh, right down. Oh, that's no, Markolov. Where was Schwartzman? Anyway, uh, we do get the four points for pole position, so that extends our gap to 17 points uh, to the next two contenders. So uh, that is a little bit less pressure. But uh, Schwartzman is... Uh, where is he on that list? Uh, I've got no idea. He's down the order as well anyway. So let's get into the race. And hello to everyone joining us here in Silverstone this weekend as the drivers make their final preparations for today's race. The grid is forming up and we're getting ready for what promises to be a real spectacle. So Silverstone's 3.6 miles of tarmac and 18 corners are no stranger to rain. Even in these conditions, without the DRS that would normally be available, the Wellington and Hangar Straits still represent some of the best opportunities for overtaking. I'm joined by a man who's had many a wet race, Davide Valsecchi. Just how challenging will these conditions be out there on track? Delighted to be here, Alex. Even in this weather, nothing would be easy for them. We may have standing water, which means visibility will be a worry. They just need to stay clear of the white lines and curbs. That can cause you a real problem when it's so slippery. As we're now moments away from the off, let's take a look at the grid order in which they'll start today's race. Yuki Tsunoda lines up on pole position and it's Christian Lungard in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Mazepin, Alesi, Daniel Tictum and Eilat, Armstrong, Schumacher, 
Gyota, Nobuharu Matsushita, Aitken, PK, Guan Yu Zhou, and Sumaya, Nisani, Sato, Daruvala, and Felipe Dragovic, Delatrat, and Robert Schwartzman. Galeo and Artem Markalov completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. I will not let you down, Jeff. Uh, raining at the start of this race, but not enough for the intermediate tyres. So uh, it's going to be one of those sort of weird situations where it's... Uh, well, it's actually the wet tyres in Formula 2. There are no intermediates. But uh, yeah, too dry for wets, too wet for drives, uh, apparently. But uh, anyway, we will get ready to go to the uh, formation lap, uh, actually, uh, which I don't normally show. But, uh, But uh, yeah, you can see how little grip there is. We in fact we lose lose the back end before we even get uh, to the first corner. So uh, that's uh, a bit of a taster of uh, how little grip there is on the circuit on uh, these slick tyres. It's going to be uh, a very difficult one as uh, we have to uh, get our car pointing in the right direction uh, once again. And uh, thankfully there is no damage on the formation lap. So uh, yeah, very tricky uh, to get started here, but we get, get ready now to go to the five red lights. And away we go for the feature race here in the United Kingdom. And it's an all right start for us. I think we've gotten away well enough, but Lungard has got a better one to the inside. He goes as we try and hold it around the outside off circuit uh, through the first corner. A lot of understeer in these slippery conditions, but we do manage to hold on to uh, the lead for the time being but Lungard is still on the inside line uh, for turn three and he's going to get the lead and we can't quite fight back around the outside we get very close but uh, we can't quite get the nose in uh, for uh, the loop and Lungard takes the lead here at Silverstone and uh, is already pulling away uh, through Aintree so we don't have the data for that, I'm afraid. Uh, no data on the weather uh, at this point in time either so it's uh, I guess we're just going to have to wait and uh, just try our best to uh, stay with Lungard. Uh, the pace seems okay through these next couple of corners, so uh, we might just be okay uh, in these conditions. And uh, once it dries up, I think that's when we will be able to take the fight to him. Uh, once again, we just need to hold on uh, as best we can uh, while these conditions are uh, certainly uh, not favorable for, uh, for us. But uh, yeah, we're doing okay uh, for the time being as we are really losing the back end there and uh, just about managed to save the car on the grass there but we're going to lose a position uh, to Nikita Matsman in high tech and uh, the Russian makes his way through as we have to uh, go off circuit and uh, cut the uh, little uh, runoff there between Maggots and Beckett's and uh, we drop uh, into P3 just about uh, staying ahead of Alessi but uh, as we uh, continue along then Alessi uh, looking very speedy and uh, we're going to have to watch out for him as we head uh, into the uh, Stowe corner, Alacy on the inside line. We have to leave the space for him, but we do uh, manage to stay ahead for the time being. But Alacy still there as we run off circuit slightly, not really uh, paying attention to the left-hand side of the car, too busy trying to uh, see uh, where Alacy was, if he was going to pull along uh, the outside. We still uh, continue to battle away uh, through the club section. We still have to uh, try and leave some space. We run off circuit, and Alacy's going to get the run here and take the position and move himself up onto the podium. We are down in 2-4. So, uh, yeah, we just need to uh, recompose ourselves after a couple of little mistakes. We have a good run here. We're going to try and go to the inside. Lacey covers it off and then uh, gets all a bit awkward. So we have to uh, back out of it and uh, we'll try again uh, another time. But uh, trying to get a good extra here. But Eilot tries to fill the gap on the inside. Bit of contact uh, is made. But, so, oh, we've lost the car in a straight line there and spun off circuit. And that is going to drop us to the back of the field. Here's the replay with Eilot tries to uh, stick the nose in as we were going for a very uh, late apex and then just putting too much power down in a straight line there and we just lost the car and uh, now we have to make a very slow uh, re-entry onto the circuit and uh, yeah that is not great that's uh, an absolute disaster one might say and uh, we've dropped uh, not only to the back of the field but a long way behind the uh, last place car uh, ahead of us of uh, Artem Markolov. So we got a lot of work to do in this one if we want to uh, finish in the points and uh, you know hopefully be able to get back up into eighth position by the end. But yeah, we we just dropped it and uh, now we have 
yeah, we have it all to do. But uh, up ahead, Jack Aitken battling away uh, with Guan Yu Zhou and uh, Aitken. And he's now got a problem. He's going to retire from the race with a mechanical issue. Jack Aitken uh, all of a sudden uh, slowing down there on the exit of Luffield. And as we go past him, the uh, virtual safety car is out. And uh, well, the full safety car, rather. And... Uh, that is going to give us the opportunity to make a pit stop, a free pit stop, and that could get us back into contention in this race. So uh, that is exactly uh, what we are going to do. And bit of a uh, misclick there. We want the hard tyres uh, on the car, but uh, we're not going to pit on this lap because. Uh, yeah, we don't. Uh, we're a little way behind that field. I want to catch up to the field before uh, we make a pit stop uh, just to uh, sort of regain uh, that time. But uh, as things stand, uh, Christian Lungard leads the way uh, in the uh, ART from Nikita Mazepin in second position. But uh, we come into the pits now uh, for our stop and uh, we're going to switch uh, to those hard compound tyres and uh, they will take us uh, to the end of the race. It's a long time before our uh, scheduled pit stop lap but uh, I think this will pay off for us. Go, go, go. So, yeah, we uh, just need to push on, uh, try and catch up to the back of the train. We had almost caught up to the train by the time we come in, so uh, that's my hope that uh, if we can keep it on the circuit, we will catch up to the train uh, once the uh, safety car restart uh, happens. So, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can do that, but uh, as we move on, we don't. But uh, yeah, we don't do that, and Markov is now 13 seconds uh, ahead of us uh, as uh, we uh, sort of get uh, the race restarted. So it's not great news for us, but at the same time, we did still make that entire pit stop under safety car, so we still sort of gained the full advantage from that. We just couldn't catch the field. Looks like the weather is going to dry up in about five minutes. So yeah, we still I think that's still the best you know timing we could have had uh, for that pit stop. Um, but yeah, it's a bit a bit frustrating that we couldn't catch the field. But uh, as we move on, uh, we will uh, eventually uh, start making up uh, the time uh, to the cars ahead. And uh, with a faster slap of the race there, uh, that confirms that we do uh, have the pace over the field at the moment with uh, the new hard tyres versus the uh, older soft tyres that everyone else has uh, for the time being. So yeah, we just need to stay as close as we can to these uh, these cars ahead of us and. Uh, that will hopefully uh, allow us to jump a lot of them uh, once they make their stops because we did still effectively get that free pit stop from the safety car so as we uh, continue to catch up to uh, the cars ahead it's uh, only going to help us so uh, a faster slap of the race there and as everyone else uh, makes their pit stops we get out uh, in P11 so uh, that is ahead of everyone who stopped uh, on that lap. And as we continue along, uh, the uh, rest of the field make their stops now. And we are in the lead now of the feature race here in the UK. So uh, after a spin and an early pit stop, we have regained the lead. But we do have older tyres and that could cost us later in the race. We have to be a bit careful uh, on this rubber now. Uh, to make sure we can uh, get it to the end and uh, not have any uh, puncture issues as we've had uh, at this circuit in the past. But uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. And uh, oh, that's a spin, and that is not what we needed. Another one. So uh, really uh, losing composure in this round. It's a second uh, spin, and we've dropped now into fifth position. We're going to try a little switch here down the inside of Tixum at the last moment. He did not see that coming, uh, which is fair enough. But uh, we do manage to regain that position up into fourth but uh, we've just dumped it from the lead and now down uh, into fourth position uh, all of a sudden. We really need to uh, try and reduce these mistakes. That was just putting too much power down uh, while on the inside curb. But uh, as we continue on, we are right on the back of Callum Eilert and we should be able to make a move on him uh, as we uh, get towards maybe turn three uh, with the best opportunity. But uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to try and carry the speed through turn two, whereas uh, the traditional thing is to back off slightly to get onto the left-hand side of the road, and that helps us uh, get to the inside line and make that move on Calamila. I love making that move 
uh, because it just sort of works uh, so well and uh, it is uh, occasionally something you see uh, in real life too so uh, it's quite cool to uh, always pull that one off but uh, anyway as we continue on uh, through the rest of this race onto the penultimate lap of the race now and we need to make another pit stop uh, that first pit stop we made was too early in the race and uh, in Formula 2 there is a rule uh, that you can only pit after uh, a given number of laps uh, for this race it is after lap 6 on or after uh, lap 6 so we have to make another pit stop in this race and uh, well I mean I have to take the blame for that I just completely forgot about that rule it just did not cross my mind when I came in uh, I think on lap 3 or 4 so yeah that is really really frustrating and uh just to confirm in the bottom left corner that bottom line of uh, text there you know it, it says clearly we need to stop on or after the sixth lap of the race so i can only blame myself uh for that that is very very frustrating um but it is what it is i yeah i think you know, Copy knowing that now um Again, misclicking on uh, the radio. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think we we could have potentially uh, got a better result, obviously, by not pitting and just trying to work our way through the field after the first uh, the first spin. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is going to drop us way down the field, having to make uh, another pit stop. We're going to stick on the soft tyres. I think they'll be the ones uh, that we did qualifying on. So they'll have a few laps on them, five laps, uh, I guess, in total, including the in-lap and the out-lap. So, uh, they won't be at their absolute peak, but maybe if we uh, emerge behind another car as we send one up the inside of Masman to just prove uh, that we could do it, uh, you know, that proves that we could win this race. We're right behind uh, Christian Lungard as we uh, would have been going on to the final lap, but uh, we have to make a pit stop and uh, switch on to the uh, soft compound tyres to uh, just, you know, confirm this uh, result. So... Uh, otherwise, we'd uh, get disqualified as we uh, cross the line, uh, which I have done before uh, in F1 2019 at this exact circuit. Um, yeah, I uh, I think I fit on lap one after uh, a safety car, and yeah, it, they didn't count it because it was too early uh, in the race. So it's not the first time I've made this mistake. Thankfully, this time I was uh, aware enough to uh, see the uh, the uh, warning at the top of the screen as we uh, head on to the penultimate lap but uh, yeah that it's ruined our race really and uh, we're down into 16th but we've got Robert Schwartzman one of our main championship rivals uh, up ahead of us and uh, our uh, another one uh, who has uh, been very fast Felipe Drogovic uh, is behind so uh, we're around two of our main rivals Machu Cita is a little bit further up the road I think maybe back end of the point or just out so uh, yeah, there's uh, definitely, uh, it's not the worst considering where our rivals are in this race, but it's definitely, uh, definitely could have been a, a lot better this race. But uh, anyway, we are closing up to the back of Robert Schwartzman as uh, we head on to the hangar straight for the final time. DRS open, and we're going to try and make the move on Schwartzman. We've got the run, we'll go to the inside as we head towards Stowe and we'll get the move done pretty easily with the extra grip uh, that we have on uh, these tyres and uh, we may uh, even try and catch up to the next two cars the two triads are up ahead we go for a big look up the inside here but we just can't get close enough we have a good run though as we're heading towards the final couple of corners but a bit of a loser for the back end and we're going to lose so much time here that Schwartzman's going to get us back and we will cross the line in 16th position a mile off the road and we've absolutely ruined uh, the end of that race we could have probably got one or two more spots uh, with the run out of that last uh, couple of corners, but wasn't to be. Victory for ART then, after a quality performance. Davide, what do you think made the difference here? Wow, well, there's no doubt that the race was impacted as soon as the safety car made an appearance. It was so important how the successful team today react to this situation. They were decisive and stuck to their strategy, which really helped them Taken ART, the French team who have been racing since the 90s in various forms of most sport, are once again back on the winner's podium today after a brilliant display of driving skill.
So it is Christian Lundgaard who takes the race victory today. Mazepin gets his season underway uh, with a strong second place finish with Callum Eilat finishing up in third. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. The gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race for our championship leader. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? Difficult call, but I'd say Christian Ludgard. He was committed the entire race, and it's paid off with the result. And now a look at the team standings. MP Motorsport moved to the top of the table. Meanwhile, a strong weekend from ART this time out, and they improved their position in the championship. Goodbye for now then, but we really are just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. So that brings this uh, feature race uh, to an end, and uh, not a very positive one, unfortunately. Pole position and finishing down in uh, 16th. It's not really uh, not really good enough, unfortunately. But, uh, I mean, we did get the points for pole, so it's not a completely uh, pointless race uh, for us, but uh, it's just so frustrating to be, you know, to be close uh, to, well, you know, definitely a podium, maybe even winning, and then, yeah, finding out that uh, we missed, uh, Missed one of the most important rules, and uh, yeah, we pit pit too early, unfortunately. But uh, oh well, I guess uh, that explains why no one else come into the pits under safety car. Otherwise, uh, without that rule, I'm sure uh, they uh, probably would have done that. But uh, yeah, frustrating. But you know, I can't complain. It's my own mistake for well, just forgetting that rule basically. So. Oh well, we'll uh, just have to try and fight back uh, in the next race. Um, it would have been good to start, uh, you know, those one or two positions higher than we did, uh, or than we would are, uh, well, than we are going to if we got uh, ahead of Schwartzman. There's the spin. If we did get ahead of Schwartzman and uh, Sato, but uh, you know, that's you know two less cars that we'd have to worry about in the next race. But uh, oh well, uh, it is what it is. I can't really. You know, complaining about it too much, just lost the back end at the final corner as well, and uh, well, I guess we made a bit of a habit uh, of that this race, there was sort of three big mistakes I suppose uh, in this one, so yeah, very very frustrating unfortunately, but uh, oh well, we'll uh, we still have a chance of uh, getting into the points in the sprint race. We're starting 16th. If we can gain eight positions in the sprint race, uh, we will uh, have uh, a better chance. And here we are, back after yesterday's exciting feature race for today's sprint. The top eight from yesterday have been reversed for the grid down below, and we're almost ready to start. I'm joined by a man who's had many a wet race, Davide Valsecchi. Just how challenging will these conditions be out there on track? Delighted to be here, Alex. Even in this weather, nothing would be easy for them. We may have standing water, which means visibility will be a worry. They just need to stay clear of the white lines and curbs. That can cause you a real problem when it's so slippery. So here we are on the grid then for the uh, sprint race, and this time it is wet once again at the start. We'll uh, also uh, be drying up towards the end, maybe a little bit later this time, but uh, it will also be uh, the uh, wet compound tyres uh, that we'll be starting the race on. So no tyre rules in the sprint race to uh, catch us out. So we'll just get to the five red lights and away we go for the sprint race here at Silverstone and it's a fairly steady start but uh, it's an all right one and uh, we can work with this as we have a look to the inside of Robert Schwartzman and we will just about squeeze through there uh, riding up on top of the curb to try and uh, leave uh, some space around the outside we uh, did get a bit pinched in but we go up the inside of a couple of cars here the two tridents uh, as we try and battle away with Roy Nassani just giving us enough space on the apex of turn three we go around the outside of turn four but we just can't get the car turned in and Nassani is going to stay ahead of us and 
and uh, with uh, a lot of traction issues on the exit we're going to be uh, re-overtaken by Marino Sato and Robert Schwartzman we're going to be back down to where we started in this race we'll see if we can have a look to the inside of Schwartzman uh, but uh, we're really uh, just covering off the cars uh, behind us we uh, can't make a move on Schwartzman from this far back uh, with the grip uh, that we have at the moment so uh, yeah we're just uh, stuck in this uh, position for the time being and we'll try and uh, push on more uh, further on into the race but uh, for now uh, I'll also quickly mention I raised the difficulty to 100 uh, for this race which is higher than I've used uh, throughout this entire Formula 2 season I haven't ran 100 difficulty since uh, episode 1 of my team but uh, anyway up the inside of Robert Schwartzman and we ride up on top of the curb as he was uh, pinching us uh, onto the apex but we didn't manage to get the move done there and uh, we have to uh, sit and wait for another opportunity but uh, we're going to try this again carry the speed through turn two a bit too much speed though in these wet conditions not as much grip as uh, in the dry but we do get to the inside of Schwartzman and make our way up uh, into 15th still battling away with Schwartzman though and we may be actually be able to get the traction on the exit here as we're awkwardly up on the outside like we were on lap one but we do get a nice switch back through Aintree and we will have the run along the Wellington Strait as we head uh, along towards Brooklyn we will get the move done on the inside line here and uh, finally uh, take that 15th position but you can see Sato has uh, gotten away from us quite a bit as uh, he and Tani and uh, a few group a, a small group of cars up ahead are uh, bunched up there so we're actually quite a large group uh, looking at that but uh, anyway as we uh, continue on uh, through this race we still uh, manage uh, to hold off Robert Schwartzman but uh, he's just being a bit of an annoyance at this point and we, we have to keep defending from him every once in a while we actually run wide there and Schwartzman's got the run he's going to make the move and we just cannot defend from that uh, going so slowly out off of that corner after uh, getting a bit of gravel and uh, that is uh, that position uh, down the drain that's the entire work we've done in this race and we've just lost it in one corner but uh, 10 minutes of rain to go and uh, that is good news for us as we don't even know what we're trying there to be honest but uh, yeah continuing on uh, through this race we're just trying to do our best to stay close to Schwartzman we don't really seem to have the ultimate pace um, but uh, oh that's Zamaya with an issue and that is one free position for us as uh, he pulls off the road and out of the race uh, with a mechanical failure that's uh, uh, two from two for the Campos team Aiken with an issue in, in the feature virtual race Samaya with an issue avoid. and the virtual so safety car is out uh, for uh, Samaya we but uh, that So yeah, VSC does not last long. We soon get back underway, and uh, that didn't really have any major uh, effect uh, on our race. So uh, as we uh, continue on then on the restart, this Daruvula with an issue smashes the DRS board, and uh, he is out of the race with a uh, mechanical failure. Now we don't know where the activation point is for the rest of the race. So thanks, Jayen. Really, really appreciate that. But uh, as we continue on through the race, we're still. Uh, losing a lot of pace and now Drogovic is uh, really putting the pressure on as we are really struggling to even keep the car on the road really uh, wringing the neck out of it there uh, through the uh, first couple of corners but just getting so much understeer at this point in the race I assume the tyres must be overheating as we have a look try and get up to the inside of Drogovic but we end up making contact there as we just couldn't uh, get the car to the left uh, the way I really sort of uh, wanted to there and uh, well, we do do well to avoid contact for a little while there, but uh, eventually it was made. A bit hard to see if there's any damage with uh, the MFD at uh, the bottom of the screen there, but uh, oh well, we will uh, try and uh, continue on. I think we... I don't know. I don't know if we got damage or not. Uh, I think we may be okay. Uh, we we didn't get the uh, indicator come up, and Jeff didn't mention anything, so I think we might have got away with it in uh, this particular case, but uh, we'll have to see. Uh, if uh, they change front wing uh, when we uh, switch on to the drives. But meanwhile, our slowness has uh, caused Galeo and Delatraz to run side by side. Galeo uh, is got to get that move done as we have a little uh, look backwards there. But uh, as we uh, continue to push on uh, through this race, we continue to struggle on these tyres. You can see losing uh, so much time uh, to uh, the cars ahead and just holding up Galeo and Delatraz uh, behind as we continue to struggle for uh, understeer and rear traction and we run off the road there and uh, just completely uh, made a mess of that but uh, that allows Sean Galeo uh, to get through 
and on the run up to Brooklands and uh, it surely won't be long uh, before Della, Tra Della tries, uh, tries to make the move as well. We do hold on uh, to the position for now but it's just this race just isn't working out for us. We just don't have the pace uh, on these tyres. We were okay at the start but yeah I think these are Yeah, and there's confirmation uh, of what I thought. The tyres are definitely uh, getting too hot to uh, to hear that radio message. is uh, It's not one you hear very often, so they must be uh, must be really roasting uh, at this point. So, yeah, we need to probably I don't know try and cool the tyres down. I guess um, the uh, standing water. Um, I'm not sure. I assume that works, given that uh, just given the instruction, we're not doing it uh, along this straight. But uh, yeah, I've almost had enough of uh, these tyres, so uh, by the time we uh, get to the end of uh, lap number 9, uh, we are actually going to come in on this lap. It is definitely early, but we have no pace on these tyres, so we might as well try something. If we can catch a safety car or VSC uh, this time, uh, that would be very ideal for, uh, for our race. But uh, we'll have to see if uh, we get lucky. But uh, the dry tyres go on. We're on to the harder release, release. of the two compounds. And uh, they will serve us until uh, the end of this race. No more scheduled pit stops. So uh, on we go then out of pit lane. Very, very tricky on uh, the power. But uh, we do manage to keep it on the road this time on pit exit. And we can continue to push on. But uh, immediately there's... I mean, about the same amount of grip, to be honest, that we had on those uh, on those wet compound tires, maybe uh, even less. But uh, we'll see how it goes. The dry conditions will be coming very, very soon, so uh, it's not all uh, not all hope is lost as we lose the back end through the final corner and uh, just about keep it out of the wall. But uh, yeah, Delatraz uh, in the pits along with a lot of other cars, so that elevates us uh, up only one position, though. So. Yeah, still plenty of work uh, left to do in this race because uh, after everyone has made their stop onto the dry compound tyres, uh, we're only in 18th position, so we're only ahead of Delatraz, Sato, and maybe one other... No, there's only 20 cars left in the race, so uh, there you have it. We've only gained two positions uh, in this race because, yeah, Daruvula and Samaya are uh, out of the running, so as we uh, continue on, we do eventually uh, catch up to Nikita Mazepin, the Russian in the high-tech, and we actually have a good run here. We might make a move uh, into Cop's corner. We do up the inside of Mazepin, and that's a pretty nice move there on Mazepin. He gets a good switchback, though. We can't quite uh, complete the move, so we're going to have to stick behind him uh, as we head through Maggots and Beckets and see if we can uh, get a run on the exit of Chapel uh, along the hangar straight. So here we go, trying to line it up, and we do uh, get a pretty good launch, and the uh, DRS uh, will certainly assist us here as we try and make the move on Mazepin. We're going to have a little look to the outside of Mazepin, and we're going to have to go the long way around here, but a uh, bit of grass on entry. Around the outside we go, and Mazepin's going to have the ideal line here. We're so wide, and Mazepin gets a better exit, but we still uh, have the nose in on the inside. We go for a big dive. Uh, up the inside of Mazepin, not quite aggressive enough though as we haven't quite completed the move but we uh, make sure that uh, we do so heading around the final two corners and we move ourselves up and into 17th. Next up is uh, the the uh, other Russian of uh, Artem Markolov so let's see if we can pass him and we're going to really actually push him through the uh, farm curve there around the outside as we head uh, into Village and we should be able to complete the move on the inside of the loop. We actually might have a look at Galail here, not quite getting alongside the Indonesian and we will just have to settle for 16th position but uh, we may be able to uh, have another look at Sean Galail as uh, we head around the rest of this lap. We'll see if we can catch up to him and we go up the inside and very very close uh, to uh, making contact there but we do make a very nice move on Sean Galail. I'm very happy uh, with that one. Uh, it's very hard to make a move on a car that uh, is tucked up right behind uh, the rear wing of uh, another. So uh, to make the move on Galeo, very, uh, very, very satisfying to not smash into Lungard at the same time. But we've got the inside of Lungard uh, into Cops, and that's another position for us up into 14th now. But uh, yeah, Jack Aitken 1.6 seconds up the road with only one sector to go. 
Um, three seconds a lap faster than Aiken. That number can't be right, surely. Oh, he is on the soft tyres, so his tyres could be wearing out more than ours. But uh, even so, that's a huge, huge uh, pace advantage. But uh, unfortunately, it's uh, not enough as we're really we're uh, throwing everything at it through Stowe there. But uh, yeah, it uh, wasn't enough, and uh, it won't be enough for a points finish today. Unfortunately, 14th place as we come around the final corner, and it's going to be uh, a pretty dismal weekend, honestly. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. So there you have it, a P16 and a P14 after a pole position, not at all what the doctor ordered, not at all. And that brings to an end another great race. So Davide, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? I think they kept a cool head, that's why they won today. Smooth, steady, everything bad that happened to them, they handled it calmly and professionally. That's what let them focus on getting the best out of everything else. The car, the strategy, they managed to keep out of trouble the whole way around. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. So it is Luca Giotto, the Italian, who wins for high-tech. Mick Schumacher finishes up in P2 with Dan Tictum in third. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. And so, driver of the day then, Davide Balsecchi, who do you think you'd go for? Let's give it to Felipe Drugovic. That was a quality drive from start to finish. He can be proud of that one. And here's how things are shaping up in the team's championship. MP Motorsport move further clear at the top. There will be plenty more twists and turns to come this season. I hope you'll join us at the next race when Formula 2 returns. So uh, apologies for not showing the uh, driver's championship there. So I'm not actually sure. I don't think the top three have uh, honestly changed because uh, Masushita and... Uh, Schwartzman uh, both did not score points this weekend so I assume we're still 17 points ahead of uh, the two of them and uh, yeah so it's uh, yeah really not uh, a huge change uh, in terms of the championship they're the next group of cars I guess um, I'm not even sure who's in the who's in that next group of cars by now it changes so much uh, every round uh, in this championship I thought uh, at the start of the season our main rival might be Christian Lungard and Drog Drogovic, uh, but uh, now it seems to be uh, Robert Schwartzman uh, entering the fray. Matsushita has always been uh, quite consistent. So, yeah, it's very, very up and down for uh, a lot of drivers, and uh, we've been uh, on a huge down recently, and it's a pointless weekend here uh, at Silverstone, aside from uh, the four that we got from pole position. So. Uh, yeah, we really need to try and come back strong uh, in Hungary and uh, find some form again. But uh, yeah, not really sure what to say about that one. Just too many mistakes. And um, yeah, I need to read the rule book uh, before the uh, feature race to uh, make sure we know uh, when we're allowed to, uh, to make those pit stops. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, try and... Uh, come back with a good result in Hungary but uh, other than that not uh, anything else really to cover in this video so I will say thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time for the round in Hungary thank you let me know what you thought I'll see you next time goodbye system or DRS allows you to gain speed on certain straights. We call these areas the DRS zone. You can use your DRS in these areas at will during practice and qualifying, but in the race DRS is only available if you're within one second of the car in front. The bar at the bottom of your MFD will fill up as you approach the DRS zone and once it starts flashing press the DRS button to activate.